Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Senior Living Today. With so many options available in senior living, deciding what type of community and care level is best for you or your loved one can be overwhelming and even confusing. On our last episode, we discussed all things independent living. If you missed that episode, be sure to go back and listen. Today, President of Springfield Masonic Community, Tony Berardi, will be joining us again as we dive into assisted living and senior living communities. Thank you again, Tony, for joining us today. Not a problem, Alexandra. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. So let's start off with the question of age. Is there a specific age when someone can move into assisted living? Well, at the Ohio Masonic communities, it's 55 and older. And then how do you determine if somebody qualifies for assisted living? That's a very good question, because I think that's something a lot of people struggle with when they are dealing with a loved one at home and trying to determine, you know, what's the best placement. Um, sometimes people feel that just getting them out of the house is going to change their abilities, and that's not always the case. So having a, a nursing representative go out and do a thorough assessment of their abilities and whatnot um, is how we determine, you know, the, the best level of care for them uh, when it comes to assisted living. A lot of times we start the process with families wanting to look at independent living because they feel that their loved one's not as bad as they want to admit. And then during that tour process, the sales manager or sales counselor will maybe pick up on some cues that lead us to believe they need more care. So as we talk about, you know, what it looks like to live in independent living and the things that they're responsible for, sometimes families get that understanding. So we'll we'll use the assessment tool um, as a definitive way to prove that they're you know, uh, in need of assisted living. Other times people come to us knowing they need assisted living and that assessment is really just used to determine um, you know, the needs so that we can develop a comprehensive care plan and service plan for them so that we know that we're covering all their needs uh, mentally, socially, and physically uh, while they're in our care. So I know that during the assessment process, um, the subject of ADLs might come up. Um, so ADL is a term that's commonly used when discussing assisted living. Can you explain what that stands for and what those are? Yes. So ADLs are activities of daily living. In the medical world, we use a lot of acronyms because things have multiple names and some of them get confusing. So we use a lot of acronyms and ADL stand for activities of daily living. Those involve things like getting out of bed in the morning, getting dressed, um, putting, uh, you know, putting your groceries away, cleaning, uh, taking a bath, taking a shower, doing laundry. Those are all activities of daily living. Some of them carry a lot more weight than others. You know, when you move to an assisted living, we'll prepare all your food. So if cooking something that you're struggling with at home or you're unsafe with, that's something that's, you know, part of uh, all assisted living programs. Um, but, in, and that can be overcome even with meals on wheels at home. But when you start to need help, with transfers or getting around long distances more than just, you know, your bed to the chair and those things. Um, those activities of daily living are, are what really uh, assisted living is designed for. So it's my understanding that at Springfield Masonic Community, you have two different models of assisted living. Um, can you explain what those models are and how you determine what the best fit is for somebody looking to move there? Yes. So we have two buildings. One is Cunningham Place. Cunningham are full apartments. They have kitchens with stoves and microwaves and refrigerators. And we call that our social model assisted living. So some people, like I said, come to us and say, you know, hey, mom uh, or dad or my sister, um, they really need assisted living because um, we've had some issues with medication management. Um, she can no longer cook for herself. She can get herself dressed and stuff, but some of that higher level ADLs or what we call IADLs, the independent uh, activities of daily living, um, she's struggling with. But she can get around when she's up and moving. And if we just manage her meds, she stays pretty stable. And you know, maybe if there's a chronic disease that med management is very important. Um, so those kinds of things are perfect for uh, Cunningham and the social model. We do light ADL help over there, more med, med management, safety and security, and then socialization. And then our York Wright building is our medical model. So the medical model are for those who need more help with their activities of daily living, you know, help with transfers, 
um, help with ambulation or, or locomotion. So the difference is ambulating would be walking with a walker. Locomotion is pro being propelled in a wheelchair um, and needing you know, more help to get around in, in different environments, longer distances, things like that. Um, maybe more chronic disease management uh, as well. And we pretty much manage everybody's meds in, in York right due to the fact that it is the medical model. How do we determine those? That is done with the assessment. You know, the assessment is a very vital tool for us when it comes to trying to accurately place somebody in a proper level of care. Because what we're worried about is people's safety and their well-being and ensuring that they're in the proper level of care gives that person the best chance for, you know, uh, having a pretty fulfilling life. So let's go ahead and now move to room options. So I think sometimes when people are looking at moving into assisted living, they might be worried that they can't move with their spouse or that there might not be two bedroom options. So can you talk about the different room options available at Springfield Masonic Community and what those include? Sure. In Cunningham, we have everything from studios to two bedrooms. Um, and some of them are quite large, you know, a thousand square feet or better. So there's a lot of different floor plans to choose from. Off the top of my head, I actually believe there's nine different floor plans in Cunningham. Um, it's a very unique building. It's got very cool architecture. Um, and it's got a, a lot of different floor plans because of the way the building's laid out. Um, there's one bedrooms, two bedrooms and studios, which gives a lot of options. Uh, there's many couples that live in Cunningham already. So it's a good option when one spouse is maybe needing more help than the other, but the stress of being the caregiver for that spouse is starting to have health impacts on the more healthy spouse. And so moving into a two bedroom and assisted living or even a one bedroom and assisted living that keeps the couples together, but has staff there to intervene where they need um, helps promote a stronger life for both uh, of the residents. And then in York right in the medical model, there are no two bedrooms or anything. They are all studio apartments or very large uh, studio apartments um, that, that are private. So a lot of them are like a studio apartment with a Jack and Jill bath. And then some of them are private baths that are larger, some are smaller, um, but there's less options over here. And that's because when, when you have the medical model assisted living, it's more about us being able to deliver care and getting into the residents when they need them and so on and so forth. So there's not the kitchen nets and things like that, like there are in Cunningham. Now let's talk about the moving process. Um, can residents bring their own belongings and furnish their own apartments in assisted living? It's actually highly recommended. So the assisted living is the general term that we use in the public, and that's what most people know. But by licensure in the state of Ohio, it's actually called an RCF, a residential care facility. And it is treated just like as if it is their home out in the community. And that word is really uh, vital when it comes to having a successful transition to assisted living. And that's to try to make it as much home as you possibly can. Bring in your furniture, bring your pictures, bring those knickknacks and those things that you hold dear and you cherish and, and try to make it feel as much as home as possible. So the moving process, um, we identify when they're, you know, what level of care they need. They choose the room uh, depending upon what's open. And then we work with the families to, uh, you know, help set up, making sure that when they get here, we have um, carts and things that we can use to get their belongings up there. Maintenance will come and hang anything that needs hung on the walls, whether it be TVs or artwork, uh, different things like that to, you know, to help the families out. And um, we, we try to make it as smooth as possible. So I know when we talk about assisted living, a lot of times we focus on the care being provided, but I know one of the other big benefits is the socialization and the ability for residents to join groups with others who share common interests with them. So can you talk a little bit about why socialization is so important for older adults? Well, I, I believe socialization is important for all humans of any age, but especially as we get older, because a lot of times their physical abilities start to limit their mobility and mobility outside of their own house. So when they're at home, yes, they may have some close by neighbors that stop over or some family members that stop over, but it's very different because in an assisted living, it's congregate living. And you could just go out of your room and go to a common area and a lot of your peers are sitting around there and you can socialize without needing to arrange a ride or not needing to make sure that somebody is coming over to the house to take you there and, and make sure that you're you know, taken care of. So the socialization part is, is just outside your door. 
And being in an assisted living, we also have activity staff that help set up different activities. Um, we have a great example of a, a activity that the residents developed and they created a get to know me club. And so it's a bunch of residents who come down once a week and they all just sit around and drink tea and coffee and they just talk about themselves, what they did for a living, where they came from, their kids, what's going on. And it it has become a huge hit and it's it's a pretty large group. I think they're up over 20 members now. And that's a great example of you couldn't do that at home. How could you get 20 people the same age, all with some sort of uh, a physical need uh, for transportation and that uh, to get together? You can't do that anywhere else. And socialization is important. It's important for us mentally. It's important for us physically because physiologically, when we're you know isolated and alone, then things start to change with your health. Getting up, moving around, and having purpose, that, that makes everything better. So one of the other things I want to touch on is senior apartment buildings. So these are kind of popping up all across the country. Can you talk about the differences between those buildings and the assisted living options available at Springfield? Sure. So one of the things about Springfield Masonic is that we are a continuum of care retirement community. So the assisted living is one level of care on the campus. So first is when you have those senior apartment complexes, that's the only level of care they offer. And it's not actually a level of care. It's independent living. It's, it's no different than living in any apartment building other than the age requirement in which there is to move in. So here we have nurses, we have aides um, on staff that are in the building 24 hours a day. I already mentioned the activity staff, which helps set up lifestyle and set up trips and, and different things like that. But then there's also the dining options um, that are here. You know, in, in Cunningham, they have a big, beautiful dining room with the kitchen right there that does, uh, you know, made to order meals. In York, right, we have two different dining rooms because they're on two different floors. So they come down to the dining room for socialization and whatnot. And it's just a much different environment. The fact that, you know, when you're in a senior apartment, can you get home health? Yes, you can. Home health is going to be intermittent and it's only going to be when you're scheduled where being in an assisted living staffs here 24 seven. So even somebody who doesn't require a whole lot of staff interaction, if something goes wrong, there's always staff around. They can push the call light, they can make a phone call, and there's always staff there to, to come in and help. So before we close today, uh, what are some important questions that families should be asking when searching for assisted living or comparing senior living communities? So I can give a very recent example. Um, just two weeks ago, I had a family member come in, she walked in off the off the street and she uh, had a whole bunch of questions and I was trying to decipher exactly the situation she was dealing with. And what I found out is that she had moved her father into an assisted living, uh, a different assisted living, and they just moved her father to skilled nursing. Um, and she did not feel that her, her father was in need of skilled nursing at this time. And as we started to talk through and try to gain an understanding of what was happening, I realized that when they were placing her father, she considered all assisted livings equal. And she was making the decision based off what she saw and you know, based off of the, the grounds and, and different things like that. She didn't make it based off of what they can deliver. If she would have asked the questions of, I know my father's going to progress as he gets older and have more needs, at what point will you need to move him? Because what she found out real quick is once he couldn't propel himself from, from his room to the dining room, they were moving him to the nursing home. His needs for everything else didn't change. His endurance for being able to propel himself is what changed. So I think that's a very, very important question is to understand that A, my loved one is going to continue to age and to have more and more increasing needs. So what is the capacity of the assisted living to meet those? And then at what point, what is the discharging criteria? Knowing those things up front won't put you in the same position like this daughter was. She had no idea that that was something that, was, that could potentially happen. And basically her words to me were, he was already struggling with it. Had I known that, I probably wouldn't have put him there. And she's very you know, correct. She was 
um, not ignoring the fact that her father had needs and she knew that her father was progressing. If she would have known that that was one of the criteria, she would have known it would have been a short lived and she probably wouldn't have placed them there. So just understanding the capacity of the facility, what they can do, what the discharge options are and what the discharge criteria is, that, that's probably one of the most important things to understand when you're looking for an assisted living. Well, Tony, thank you again for joining me today. Uh, in our next episode, we will be talking about memory care and memory support communities. So please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next part in our four-part series. Thank you all for listening, and we will be back again in two weeks. Mm -hmm.